We're off to two memorable semi-finals. Can the players overcome the nerves today and really do themselves justice in front of a packed crowd at Croke Park? It's the day of destiny for the players of Donegal and Mayo. It's the day when you want to play your best game ever. Morris Deegan's in charge. The speculation is over. This is the real thing. Yes, just could have reviewed what I said a couple of moments ago, actually. The players are changing ends, contrary to what we thought here. And Mayo were defending the Hill 16 end of the ground. So that means they're going to face quite a wind in this half. It'll be interesting to see, therefore, will Donegal put in the traditional full-forward trio of Murphy, McBrearty and McFadden, draw everybody else out and try and pound ball into those three in the hope of getting a good score. The noise is deafening. Great sense of expectation among the fans. I'm just watching the Donegal goalkeeper. I think he was oh, yeah. under the impression he, that they right. were going to play the other way. That's right, yes. <laughs> Incidentally, the Donegal team arrived in what they thought was the right-hand dressing room, their original, their normal dressing room, and they were told to change. Match underway. 123rd All-Ireland Final. And straight away it's Donegal and it's Leo McLoon. Bounce is awkward here. Kane came out to it. Left it there. Colin Boyle, about whom there was a doubt in the build-up to this. First free taken by Donald Bohan. Kevin McLaughlin kicking it in. Controlled with difficulty but handled on the ground there by Killian O'Connor. The wind is quite a factor here this afternoon. It's swirling, it's nasty. And the players are going to have to come to terms with it fairly quickly. Look how far back Mark McHugh has got right from the very beginning. All the way in towards Michael Murphy and an awkward bounce there, took it away from him. First kick out of the match. Going to be to Mayo. Yeah, just that ball again, badly directed in Michael Murphy, and it's notable, actually, that they've put the most inexperienced defender, actually, Kevin Kane, marking him. I wouldn't have thought that. I thought Cafferty might have got on him. Murphy's playing in the conventional number 14 position, full forward, and Kane, as you say, has moved in from the corner. Moving in to take this one is, once again, Neil Gallagher. Had that tremendous match in the semi-final, dominated his patch. Lee Keegan, good to see him back. Touched away beautifully there by... Paddy McGrath, onto it quickly there came Mark McHugh, and McHugh has already gone back deep, nobody particularly taking him up, but then he's not going to do any damage in his own half of the field. He's moving forward, however, now as our Danny goal with Leo McLoon here, challenged by three male players, four. Challenges coming in smartly and sharply, had to. Donald Vaughan took it well, good outlet pass there to Alan Dillon, who drifted away to the left-hand side. Three players ahead of him. Breeze a factor, however. And the bounce awkward there, but well taken by Eamon McGee. Did really well to go back and forage for that one. Again, it's Mark McHugh. It's this time Rory Gallagher has taken over that role. Controlled here by Carol Lacey. 45 metres out from the target. Beautifully in there to Murphy. Great shot, great goal! Two minutes and 25 seconds on the clock when he got that. What a start for Dunny Goal here as they did to win their second ever All Ireland title. Brilliant ball in by Lacey. It's Murphy who has the height advantage over Kane, and maybe that's a marking task that's a bit too much for Kevin Kane. Murphy wins the first ball in, and it's a dream start for the favourites, the Ulster champions. I just throw attention to it a moment or two ago, Jerry felt it was wrong to put Kane on him, and again, what Donegal have cleverly done there, put Murphy directly in front of the goals, but note his handling that time, it was perfect control from Lacey's uh, delivery in, and what about the finish, it was emphatic. Well, that is an enormous body blow for Mayo, the thing is, they have an awful lot of time to actually repair the damage, but well, that's a poor kick in there by Barry Moore, and didn't look confident at all. Well, a goal that's come after two minutes and 25 seconds on the clock as the referee goes in. It's not the fastest goal ever in an All-Ireland final. That was 37 seconds back in 1962, scored by Gary McMahon for Kerry. But how about this? Once he got it under control, real danger, and there was nothing Kane could do about it. A ferocious shot. Happy fans.
Oh yes, it was a thunderous shot. My God Almighty, David Clark, who's a wonderful shot stopper, barely saw it. What a boost for Danny Gall. Playing with the wind, remember. Keith Higgins. Back in here as far as Colin Boyle. Forced out for most of that semi-final with a virus. Danny Gall have it back again. And that's McGlynn slung around there by Jason Doherty. No question about the free kick. And the referee is in very, very quickly just to warn Jason Doherty. Uh, no more of that. Or he could be seeing a card. Might even see a card before that. Very early to be incurring the wrath of the match referee oh. Morris Deegan. It's a, That's a very early yellow very, card. Very early card indeed. Again, I just wonder if I warrant it. Here's McGlynn. I think the referee has decided he's going to lay down the law early on here. Worked by McGrady. Cross here as far as Rory Kavanagh. Chasing after him Keith Higgins. There to a save, but it's still Kavanagh. Very strong. Beautifully in here. Oh, another sling down challenge there on Mark McHugh. And if the referee gave one yellow card already, he'll probably give another one. Yeah, just walk Mark McHugh coming through here. Lee Keegan catches him very high. That's a poor tackle by Lee Keegan. And, uh, you know, Morris Egan has no alternative but to issue a yellow card to him. So two yellow cards in the space of uh, about a minute, all of them inside the opening six minutes. And Mayo already a goal behind. Free kick coming up, which will be taken by Colin McFadden. Once Mark McHugh is OK. Well, he's a vital influence, Mark McHugh, that much we know from this year's championship. Terrific young player. Colin McFadden now from 13 metres out. Freeze blowing over his shoulder. 20 goals top scorer this season with 328, now make it 329. Could hardly miss from there. Yeah, I know there's only six minutes gone or so, but already there's a problem emerging on the far side of the field for, uh, from a male point of view. Let's again just watch that tackle there a few moments ago. That's what Jason Doherty got booked for. Kick out quickly taken here out as far as Lee Keegan. And now he's got to be working that tight rope of a yellow card for hopefully the rest of the match. Again, the bounce is unkind. Comes back here to Frank Buglin once again. What a season he's had. Terrific football. Carol Lacey has set up the goal for Murphy. Nicely down once again as far as Paddy McBrearty's. The marking's very loose. Donald Vaughan after him. Can't get to him. Brearty kicks it and McBrearty's shot has gone just to the left. And a missed opportunity to add to the two scores so far. Yeah, the point I was making a moment or two ago, Jarrett, down the far side, the Cusick stands out of the field, Donegal are running at the Mayo defence, and Mayo are finding it very hard to put in legitimate tackles and stop them. Well, he has been concerned, James Horan, about uh, Lee Keegan initially, then there was a virus affecting Colin Boyle, and there's also been an old injury flaring up for Aidan O'Shea, but uh, certainly Jim McGuinness must be very happy with the way the opening minutes of this match have panned out. Frank McGlynn. Getting on the ball time and again. Clearly telegraphed his intentions there to Carol Lacey, and the referee whistles against Colin Boyle. And Colin Boyle is saying it was a legitimate challenge. Lacey saw it otherwise. And really, when you look at it, second time of asking, the referee had very few options. Very few options. Colin Boyle was late with that tackle, didn't, and uh, very fair enough, free kick for Donegal. Can't argue with it. Well, that's three fouls so far, two yellow cards given against Mayo players. They've got to be careful. Got to be careful, and it's a sign of anxiety. They're quite edgy at the moment, not getting to the ball. They're too put, their touch is poor, actually, in their own forward line. Lacey now can use the wind here, letting it drop in towards Colin McFadden, but it breaks away out as far as Keith Higgins again. Double bottom now. Gives the easy ball to Keegan, chance to carry it and then drive it forward. One against three. Conroy getting it this time, and Conroy's on a little push in the back there. And Michael Conroy wins a free kick for Mayo here in a possibly scoring position. Yeah, Conroy was outstanding actually in the semi final against Dublin. His movement across the line was wonderful. That time he got out in front of McGee, got to the ball first, and McGee pushed him in the back. Difficult enough one this time though for End of Varley. Varley scorer of two points in the uh, semi final win. Teacher works in uh, Mayo, plays for Gary Moore. 
scored a goal when these teams last met in a league match back in March. But Ender Varley now could uh, raise Mayo cheers. They can put this one over. It's not easy, as Martin was saying. 30 metres from the target. Can't quite pull it in. And eventually it comes safely back to Mark McHugh and then away out of danger via Frank McGlynn. Held further away by Leo McLoon. Nearly Gallagher now. And Danny Gold just building out uncomplicated football, nice and simple. They know the pattern, they know the normal routine. Get themselves out of trouble quickly. Rory Cavanagh's ball there goes straight to Keith Higgins. Good work by the number four of May up as far as Alan Dillon now. Kicking it into the three-man inside forward line, flicked away well there by Neil McGee. Yeah, that's the point I made a moment or two ago. A number of the Mayo forwards, when the ball has been delivered to them, their touch is poor. I know they're under a lot of pressure, but you need to be able to have those balls sticking. Well, maybe Kevin McLaughlin can raise a cheer or two. Back here as far as Aidan O'Shea. Once again, it's Lee Keegan prepared to join the attack, flicking it into the corner here. In as far as Killian O'Connor had that marvellous semi-final and they look to be pulled, but the referee says play on. Three men surrounded him, it's still O'Connor trying to battle for this, only 20 years of age, and in the end the referee gives the free against him. I thought there should have been a free in there a moment or two ago. After O'Connor came away from that, he made contact with Eamon McGee. Referee hasn't seen it, but the umpires have. Play continues at the other end, Donegal advance, dangerous situation, and it's Paddy McCreary, comes back down again, back to McFadden. It's another one, and it's Colin McFadden this time, with a goal after 11 minutes, his seventh ever championship goal, fourth of the season, and what a year he's having. It was McBrearty who struck the post, came back down, not dealt with by the Mayo defence, who are looking incredibly nervous, a very, very brittle-looking defence, and it's penalised emphatically by McFadden, and it's 2-1 to no score, and it's looking very, very bad for Mayo once again, even at this early stage of the final. That's wonderful opportunity by McFadden, it must be said. But once again, Kevin Kane's handling, just as other players handling, uh, Mayo players handling, has let them down at the field. At the moment, I think Morris Egan has gone down to talk to their umpires at the far side because I think Killian O'Connor was involved in an altercation with Eamon McGee when the ball was cleared. Yeah, as I saw it, uh, Killian O'Connor and McGee got involved. Play was moving up the field. This is where Killian O'Connor felt he should have had a free and then just uh, watch... There you go, but there was another blow there. Yep. And if the referee saw that, then Killian O'Connor could be in trouble, but it looks like the referee is going to hand out a yellow card to both players.